the world's most threatening sugar, fructose. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you know what time it is. It's Friday, and so it's time for What The Fitness. But first, smash the like button, hit the subscribe, and leave a comment for the algorithm. This week, we have David Perlmutter on What The Fitness. He wrote a book called Grain Brain, not evidence-based, I'll say. This is from an appearance on Lewis Howe's podcast. So let's see what he has to say about fructose. You know, the reality is that the most threatening sugar of all is not glucose. What is it? It is fructose, by far and away. What's the difference between glucose and fructose? So they are totally different molecules in terms of the number of carbon atoms. Fructose is, doesn't require insulin for its metabolism, and as we may have talked about before, immediately is metabolized into something called uric acid, which is a profound threat to our metabolism. Wow. Glucose is absorbed and is used as fuel. Fructose is a powerful mitochondrial toxin. <laughs> so this is like two truths and a lie. Two lies and a truth. Yes. Fructose is a different molecule than glucose. Glucose can go through the liver, the liver will take some, and then it can go in the bloodstream and your peripheral tissues can have access to it. Fructose is almost exclusively metabolized by the liver. Your liver can convert it into glycogen. That glycogen can be released by the liver later for use by other tissues, but in terms of direct metabolism, it's done in the liver. Yes, it can be converted to uric acid, but him saying it immediately gets converted to uric acid no, that is not how that works. Some fructose can be converted to uric acid, but not all or most or the majority is converted to uric acid. That's not how that shit works. If we look at... Is anybody ready? Are you ready? You guys ready? Cameraman, you ready? Human randomized control trials that examine body fat, insulin sensitivity. When you look at fructose intake exchanged one per one with other sources of carbohydrate and other sugars, you see negative metabolic effects on nothing. If you overconsume fructose as part of consuming too many calories, yes, it can have a negative effect. When they do studies, where they control calories and they add or subtract fructose in a one-to-one -one ratio with other sugars, they do not see these negative effects. And so the problem with this messaging is people aren't going to see it and go, you know, golly gee willikers, I should stop drinking cola. They go, oh, fruits are poison. It's a mitochondrial toxin. No, that's just a bunch of buzzwords to make it sound smart. If it was a mitochondrial toxin, then please explain how the fructose in fruit, which by the way, is the exact same fructose that's in soda, is not a mitochondrial toxin. And then please explain how people who eat more fruit are healthier metabolically on average. That math, don't math. There's some of these folks out there that they use the biochemistry and these pa metabolic pathways to sound really smart while also just completely neglecting the actual human outcome data. Fine to talk about mechanisms, fine to talk about biochemical pathways. I have a bachelor's with honors in biochemistry, but it is not more important than human outcome data because just because a mechanism exists doesn't mean it will cause an outcome. If there's an outcome, there's absolutely a mechanism. But just because a mechanism exists doesn't mean you have an outcome because outcomes are the summation of dozens, hundreds, sometimes even thousands of biochemical pathways and mechanisms, all summing up to an outcome. Focus on outcomes versus mechanisms. If you want to have fruit, it's fine. I would not worry about David's grain brain. Catch you guys next week.